64 degrees, the wind blowing straight out at 11 miles an hour. And the first pitch from Langdon is ball one as we get underway at 2.02. Couldn't be a more perfect day for some softball. Ball on the outside part of the plate for a called strike. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of that from Langdon. She has a lot of curve, a lot of spin. She needs to be efficient and get ahead of these hitters here. Ball just missed inside. Oh, I want that if I'm the pitcher. <laughs> That one got away from Langdon and she falls behind three and one. In this first inning, it's very important for her to establish her strike zone, throw a few different pitches, see what the umpire is going to give her. Last yeah. night, last night, Schoonover was kind of all over the place. She was really, really good. And then she had six or seven strikeouts, three walks. And a couple of hit batsmen. And that 3 2 pitch is fouled off. She has such late break right there that easily could have been ball four. Uh, but with that late movement, she gets a swing and now she's going to battle here. Right back to Langdon, and that's out number one. As Langdon is ready to go to work against the Bulldog catcher, Lindy Ray Davis, who fouls it off down the right side. Our umpires today, Phil Friel's behind the plate, Marty Abazetian at first, and Matt Dial down at third. You see Davis with a couple of RBIs last night. Boy, I, I don't. You could tell me what that pitch is she's throwing, but <laughs> she's gotten it up in the zone twice, and it has got a lot of movement on it. Yeah, you can really tell if she's going to come inside of these hitters. She's really trying to come up and in on their hands and see if she can induce a swing. That one's just a little high. Langdon again, four and three on a year, a 3.70 ERA. This and is another big game for her here. She's she's had some good wins this season, some really good outings. Uh, this would be huge for her resume. Phil Friels giving a little time to the catcher, Carissa Hamilton, who took that foul ball right off the mask. You were a catcher, weren't you? I was. You know what that feels like. <laughs> it's a little better. Oh, Ooh. wow. Got that mask to move, which is now a helmet. I tell you, it's a lot better today than it would have been if it had been last night. No kidding. So Langdon now is even the count at 2 2. Maybe just a little bit of settling in here for the freshman. Um, I've seen her rise ball throughout the season, and she does a great job starting it low when she wants to, but maybe right now just a little bit of nerve starting this big game. Second straight hitter who's worked the count full. And she gets the strikeout. That's what she's looking for right there, that tight spin just right there on the corner. Good two outs for the Bulldogs. Right fielder, number eight, Jenga Kearney. There she is, fifth in the nation. 10.2 strikeouts per seven innings. That is very impressive. She's and getting it done. Very excited to see what she can do through her, through her entire career at Kentucky, if that's her freshman year. And with two outs, here's Jada Kearney. Boy, Jada Kearney, another Team USA player here. Her and Aaron Koffel going to be teammates this summer, coached by Coach Lawson. One of the leaders in the SEC in home runs, but held hitless last night. And 
Langdon got that buyer. Boy, last night, a lot of the power hitters for Georgia were kind of shut down by Schoonover, so it'll be interesting to see how they answer back today with a similar pitching style on the mound. Langdon has gotten behind in the count to the first three hitters, but she's battled back each and every time. She's some, showing some great toughness right now. Kearney is a dangerous hitter. She has so much power middle out. She stays behind the ball so well, goes oppo very well. So if Langdon comes inside, she really needs to be very inside. Three batters, three full counts. See, that pitch right there tells me she knows that Kearney crushes outside, so she needs to be a little bit off the plate, but now we're in a full count again. And she got her. Kearney didn't like it, but it wasn't easy. But the dog, Hamilton, Blanton, and Tobias. And that's a first pitch strike from Kerpix. Georgia, I thought, got a really nice relief appearance. Oh, Bacchus, yes. From Lily Bacchus last right. night. She was been kind of choppy lately. Right. But um, I thought she pitched really well and kept her team in it last night, coming on in relief. She sure did. She settled in. I think she gave up the home run at one point. Um, it uh, might have yeah, been she to Epps. And yes, then after it was. That, Other than that. After that, though, she looked great. Wouldn't be surprised to possibly see her in relief again today. I'm not sure who they have in mind, um, if it's needed, but she did do really well. Rachel Lawson has tinkered with that leadoff hitting role as Smith swings through that pitch. They've gone with Koffel. Mm -hmm. Then they went with Allie Hutchins for a while. And that ball looked very much like one of Langdon's first inning pitches. It's funny, last night I think all the pitchers, you know, were hitting a lot of batters too. So today it seems like some right. <laughs> everyone's throwing high pitches today. Here's another 3-2 count. Back up the middle and that's going to be a base hit. Boy, and Riley Smith, she's just improved so much from year to year. But she seems like she is really excelling in this leadoff spot. She really is. She is such a spark plug. She takes this outside pitch, gets behind it, stays through it, and right back up the middle. That's an easy single to start off for the Wildcats. She's improved so much. I know that over the fall and the winter, she put in a lot of work, and they were so impressed with her when she came back in January. She got a stolen base last night. And she's now nine for nine on the year as Koffel stands in and takes it upstairs for ball one. It's got to be so nice for Aaron to have someone in front of her in the lineup that is getting on base. Um, you can't really pitch around her. She's, she's going to get a hit a lot of the time, Riley. She's just done so well. Boy, that's a nice pitch. It's a great spot from Kerpix. Going right at Koffel. Showing confidence in her pitch. Koffel with, I believe that was her 12th homer of the year last night. That's right. And there goes Smith, and they got her, I believe. No, the ball got loose. I thought the ball was there in time. Uh, the ball was absolutely there in time. Lindy Ray Davis has an absolute cannon behind the plate. Last now, night, she threw a runner out. Now, they're calling, are they calling her out because of obstruction? Oh, they're saying she left early, I think. Let's take another look at that if we can. So she never really caught the ball, but the first um, first base umpire, Marty Abazetian, comes in after the play, put his left arm out, and I believe they called her out for leaving too soon. Yep. And she absolutely did. Great shot by our crew. Now Koffel finds herself in a hole one and two. And 
And this is what happened last night to the Wildcats in the first. Smith got on, and then Koffel just hit a rocket that Digby got over at first base. Digby's been playing great. One of the only freshmen that starts for Georgia this year. She's really dug out a spot for herself on the field. Erin Koffel, I'm sure it's hard bringing her sometimes. You don't know if you're going to get a lot of strikes, a lot of balls. Are they going to pitch around me? Are they coming right at me? Uh, she just has to remain ready. That's what she did last night. She wasn't getting anything to look at to that last at bat. And now this would, one. this would be called a pattern if you've had five total <laughs> batters in a game and you've had five full counts. This is something. Fouls that one off. And I'm going into the seventh inning. Right. And that one missed up high. Koffel was pretty certain about it, but she wasn't going to give Phil Freels a chance to look at it. So take a look at that. Wow, the last two seasons, 95 walks for Erin Koffel. She's a dangerous hitter. That's going to show you that right there. That was probably 95 before that one. That was probably 96, right? That's right. And so here's Taylor Ebbs coming off that four RBI night last night. Yeah, Ebbs is seeing the ball so well right now. No wonder she's third in the lineup. I know the lineup changes a lot for Kentucky. There's a lot of shuffling, but she does put the hot hitters in that 3-4-5 roll. I hope I haven't taken her out of her routine because we were talking to her after the game last night, and I asked her about the fact she talks to herself during almost the whole at bat. She does. I did see last night she was saying, come on. Oh, there she goes. And it's not always the same thing. No, kind of. no, it's not. And as a hitter, it's good to have that routine. And maybe it's just what's working for her this month. Shoot, right. maybe next month it'll be a different phrase, something to get her in the zone, focus her in, stay within herself, and just look for her pitch to hit. Boy, those are two really nice pitches, perfectly placed by Kerpix on that outside corner. Oh yeah, clipping the corner right there on the black. That's where you want to be if you don't want somebody to square up. Yeah, and if the umpire is going to give that to you, I would live there. That ball almost is completely off the plate by the time Lindy Ray Davis catches it. Right. But if he's going to call it a strike because of the movement and it's clipping that, you know, edge of the plate, I would go right there. Here's another 3-2 pitch. Seems like a big moment early on for whatever reason. Doesn't it, though? <laughs> Both teams last night with trouble capitalizing with runners on base and in scoring position. And that ball is down low for ball four. So back-to-back -back walks given up now by Carpix. Here comes the Wildcat first baseman, Lauren Borzaleri. Boy, I'll tell you, last weekend against Texas A&M, her bat was hot. Three home runs that weekend. I'm telling you, that if, 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 like you said, if you can get it there, and, and I like the strike zone, but I mean, if you can get it close. That is a pitcher strike zone. I would live right there. And Lindy Ray Davis is doing a good job of framing it up for Phil Freels. Yes, she is. Lindy Ray Davis has such a great presence behind the plate, in the box. You can tell she's a leader on this Georgia team. And already early action in a Georgia pen. Destin Howard was up earlier, and now the aforementioned Lily Back is up as well. As Kerpix tries to work out of a first inning jam.
Ball is grounded foul. Here with one out, I'm sure she's looking for a pitch that's middle out, trying to hit behind these runners, see if she can advance and potentially score for her team. And got her looking. There it was. First non-full count at bat, I believe. That's right. And their fielding percentage this year is second in the SEC. I believe um, on the call with Tony, they were saying that's the first time they've been ahead of Florida's defense because they're just known so well for their great defense. They're having a great year. Speaking of great years, here's the Kentucky freshman right fielder, Peyton Plotts. Boy, she is having a great year. She worked so hard this offseason. Came back a completely different hitter this winter right before season started. I'm very impressed with her. Koffel at second, Ebbs at first. And her freshman campaign, she already has six home runs. Seeing the ball very well, above 300 average. Pretty sure she ranks third of SEC freshman for her average. Boy, and when Kerpix has gotten those strikes, I mean, she has lived in the black. Yes, she has, and every good pitcher will tell you that's right where you want right. to be. That's where you practice. We don't want to be too much on the white. Plot showing good plate discipline right now. This is a perfect hitter's count with two runners on. If I'm the hitter in the box right here, I'm looking for a really good pitch to barrel up. And hot hitting Grace Lorsing stands on deck. Boy, nice pitch. Kind of got it in on her wrist. Right. Plot's a like behind that one. Yep. There she is. She's third in batting average of SEC freshmen. And tied for first with her six home runs. So she's got some power. She hits for average. Very reliable for this Kentucky Wildcat team. Seven of eight hitters have run the count full. And here is another 3-2 pitch. That's in the right field and caught. Right now supporting. And certainly we want to remind everyone that some people are, you know, they're a little different about it, but, you know, get get those regular screenings because the medical advances have gotten to be so good That's that right. if you get that early diagnosis, the odds are really stacked in your favor. And so hats off to all the SEC teams that are, Participating in all for Alex. And Chambly swings through that one. Boy, she had a hot bat last night. She was probably the lone hitter in the lineup that Georgia was relying on last night. I think she had a couple doubles, kept them in the game. Coach Tony Baldwin thinks she can have a very big year this year. Shown lots of improvements. Baldwin, the Georgia head coach, down in the third base coaching box. JT Tomiko in the first base box, and that one's hit right at Riley Smith, who had to adjust a little bit. And there you see Tony Baldwin, third year, longtime assistant at Georgia. Succeeded Lou Harris Champer. That's right, he was the coach when I was playing. Yeah, he's he's been at Georgia quite a while. Right. Makes sense that he would take over as the head coach, doing a great job. And the dogs having a big year. Number five in the country, I think, still in RPI. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but everybody in the SEC got off to a great start and then they all started playing each other, right? That's right, there were so many upsets last night too, including Kentucky over Georgia. Sarah Mosley ready to look at the 1 0 pitch. Sarah Mosley, one of those big bats for Georgia. That 
Ball is lifted to center field. Wind blowing straight out, and the park won't hold it. 220 to straightaway center, and it looked like Mosley hit it about 230. And the Bulldogs take a 1-0 lead as Mosley goes deep for the 12th time this season. Yeah, one of those big bets for Georgia. She really gets a hold of these balls when she makes contact. That looked like it was about belt high right down the middle. And, and the SEC, if you don't capitalize on that pitch, that's that's kind of an error. So she really did a great job on that, stayed behind it. And with the wind blowing out too in John Crop Stadium, that'll help you a little bit too. So let's see how Langdon responds as Jaden Goodwin stands in. Always great to get on the board for a Georgia Bulldog. Unfortunately for them, they didn't have anyone on base, but hey, they came out and scored first. And it was the dog's first hit of the game. And this will be a telling moment here for Langdon, the freshman. You can see the corners popping in, just kind of reassuring her, seeing if she can settle in a little bit after that. I mean, a home run can kind of rattle you as a pitcher, but you know, you got to score to win anyway if you're Kentucky, so one run shouldn't really get this pitcher down. But after giving up that home run, she's come back and served up three straight balls. And you see the second most in the SEC with these home runs allowed, the 39th. Right now, she should answer back with some strikes and regain control. And that one stayed outside. So a leadoff homer, a four-pitch walk. And Rachel Lawson quickly out of the Kentucky dugout. The second baseman stands in. Goodwin, four of five on the base pass, down at first. Kuma trying to advance her over. She squared to bunt, but no signal from our home plate umpire, so she just missed it. And no need. I think she pulled back there, and now Kuma's ahead. She didn't even have to foul off a bunt or get a bunt down. Now likely going to be swinging away, and she's so versatile. She can lay down a bunt and beat that out, or she can hit the ball a country mile. So that'll be scored a wild pitch. Yeah, Kuma, one of those dangerous hitters that kind of got shut down by Schoonover last night. Going to be looking to respond differently here today, I'm sure. That's a pitch that Kerpix is getting, but maybe Langdon's just really isn't clipping the corner right. quite like Kerpix. It's more just starting and staying inside versus Kerpix getting that nice movement. So Langdon has gotten herself into a tough spot here in the top of the second. Lead off homer. And now back-to-back -back walks. Yes, she has. You, As a pitcher, you definitely don't want to respond after a home run with one walk, especially not two. So this is going to be a moment to see how tough she is right here. That ball stays downstairs. So Chambly flied out to start the inning. Then the Mosley homer to center field. And she walked Goodman. Goodwin and Kuma on four straight pitches, and that ball gets away. That's the second wild pitch of the inning, and Rachel Lawson is up and out of the dugout. Jaden Vickers has just started. In the Olympics, played for Team Italy. So she's really used to big moments, playing against tough competition. And this is certainly a big moment here for the Wildcats. She's already 2-0, and she hasn't even thrown to a hitter yet. So she's already kind of starting behind in the count. Okay, so Rachel Lawson has made all kinds of changes as well. So 
You've got Taylor Epps now in in center field. I believe Nesby. Uh, excuse me. Taylor Epps is in right field. Nesby is in center. And. Oh, second base right there. Reasoner is in at second. Yep. Looks like Coach Lawson wants her big arms out in the outfield. Let's stop the bleeding. She wants to make sure that if the ball is put in play, she has her strong arms ready to throw someone out at home or possibly another base. So we'll try to figure it out. I sent a text asking exactly what happened, and the response was complicated substitution. <laughs> Are we surprised with Coach Lawson? <laughs> no. <laughs> she really knows how to work it. That's what she does. And she's hoping Lacatana can work it right now. She's got Goodwin at third and Kuma at second with one out. And both with great speed, two on the bases. And Lacatana does what she's supposed to and throws a first pitch strike. That's what they need right now. One pitch at a time. Let's focus on strikes. If they put the ball in play, defense, get to work. Vickers continues to work down in the Kentucky bullpen. After Langdon started the at-bat. And here's Ellie Armistead, the nine hitter, with the bases full. It's a good-looking pitch right there. Didn't give it to her. Armistead 0 for last night and a big spot here. Caught the inside corner. And that's the spot you're looking for. He does love that part of the plate, but again, you got to clip it, just like Kerpix is doing a great job doing. Lorsing and Borzileri playing in at the corners. Middle of the infield at double play depth. But as you said, with that speed, it would take a really hard hit ball to complete a double play. There's no doubt about that. That one missed inside. Armistead should just be patient right now. There's a lot of balls being thrown by this Kentucky pitching staff. I would expect her to take here. Base is full, nowhere to put her. And that ball has popped up to the infield. Wow. Wow, missed opportunity right there for Georgia. That was a beautiful pitch right in on the hands. Induces exactly what she was trying to do. Get that pop up. Now they have two outs. So this is a much easier defense to play right now. But well, now we've got the leadoff. Except for the fact that Goodnight is such a good slapper. And you look how far Lorsing and Borzileri are in at the corners. That's true, and sometimes she swings away, too, so you don't know what she's going to do. Right? She could slap. Is it going to be a high chop, or is she going to hit for power? So as a corner, you just have to be ready for either. Here you see her trying to go the opposite way. Yeah, it looks like she, at least right there on that pitch, was going to try to swing away. Lakatena ahead in a count one and two. Lakatena doing a great job after that first hitter, attacking Goodnight right here in Goodnight. This is a huge moment for her with the bases loaded. Here comes the one two pitch. It's a good miss. Yep, great miss right there. Evens the count, but. Lakatana knows she can't come too far over the play right now. With two strikes, Goodnight is going to be going for it. 
And that ball has hit a bunch. Is it enough? It is. Playing in at the corners for the slapper. Last night, Georgia couldn't get any runs in. And good night with her first home run of the year. And it's a big fly as Georgia goes on top five to nothing. Look at her just swinging away. She has so much power. This pitch misses right at the letters, but she does a great job with her barrel staying behind this ball and staying short to it, staying behind it. And with it being elevated, wow, this ball just takes off. Huge grand slam moment for her. When we're sitting up here talking about, oh, she might slap. Think again. And that clears the bases and with two outs, once again, here's the Bulldog catcher, Lindy Ray Davis, who struck out her first time up. Someone else with immense power when she gets a hold of one. Georgia putting up a big crooked number here in the second after what had to be a frustrating night for Coach Tony Baldwin last night. And that ball has popped up to short center. Nesby has it, and the inning is over. But not before the dogs get. And, and Tennessee was rolled. That does not happen often, but that's the way it is in the SEC. Going to be even more so with Texas and Oklahoma coming in. No kidding. That's going to be so fun. And that shot is ripped foul by Grace Lorsing. Well, we talked about a big weekend here in Lexington. So you've got the blue-white football game going on just across the road at Kroger Field. Just about a full house here this afternoon. Got a new basketball coach, Mark Pope, being introduced tomorrow. And this joint was jumping pretty good until the dogs banged those two bombs in the top of the second. That inning, at least the half inning, took so long. Madison Kerpix was down in her bullpen, throwing some pitches to stay loose between innings. Yeah, sometimes as a pitcher, you have to. Very smart. That one missed downstairs. Sometimes you'll see pitchers doing exercises in the dugouts. I see Schoonover doing her jumping jack sometimes, or sometimes it's sprints. Whatever keeps you warm. Keeps you game ready. And that 3-2 pitch is fouled off. She tried to check her swing, and that ball nearly rolled back into fair territory. Another full count. That ball is ripped, and that's fair. Larson leads things off in the bottom of the second. As she's in with a stand-up double. What a great way to answer back. She just turns on this inside pitch. You can tell she's perfectly on time for it. Very short with her barrel, stays behind it, and it just gets by third base. She was swinging and ready to answer back. Ball hit so hard. Very difficult for Matt Dial, the third base umpire, to make a call on that as he's the twirling away. The ball was fair. Georgia is challenging that ruling. The play is under further review. Wow. Okay, so that's our crew chief, Marty Abazedian. I didn't think that was close. I thought yeah, that, from, from our view, I'm pretty sure that was fair. But I thought we'll that see. was clearly fair. It's worth a shot, right? Got to try. Maybe they decided to check it because of how Matt Dial had to get out of the way of it. Could be. Didn't take long for that review. After review, the ruling is upheld. Fair ball. That is Georgia's first challenge of the game. That's the way replay is supposed to work. Nice and quick. Take a look at this. Oh, yeah. That's clearly fair. And then watch Dial down here. Whoop. <laughs> Showing some agilities down there. But that ball was hooking. And. Okay. 
So Lorsing at second. And that's a first pitch called strike to the Kentucky catcher, Carissa Hamilton. And off speed pitch is a pretty one, too. She has just the changes in speeds going from the 60s to that one at 53. Yes, I love how she's not afraid to start a count with it and throw it back to back. There it was again. But that one got past. Eye there. First pitch that's not off speed to Carissa. That one stayed upstairs. And they called that one a wild pitch. And after being spotted to a 5 0 lead. Kerpich is set to deliver her second straight full count pitch. And there was that off speed again, too. And so, I don't think I'm even going to try to figure out this Rachel Lawson batting order thing. So, Lakatana came in to pitch, but now she's going to hit for herself. Now she's going to hit. So, if that's the case, she's hitting in what was Jenna Blanton's eighth spot. Of course, Blanton was replaced in center field by Vanessa Nesby. I'll and tell you what, Coach Lawson knows what she's doing. I guess we just need to trust her. <laughs> and now, time being called by the dog. And so, Lorsing at third, Hamilton at first, and here's Lakatena. And she takes a called first strike. Haven't seen Lakatana hit much this year, but I'm sure Lawson put her in there for more power numbers than Blanton. That's because she has hit exactly one time this year. There we go. One at bat, and she scored a run. Gotta love a hitting pitcher. Help yourself out in the circle. And interestingly enough, as I'm looking at the stats here, this has to be what happened. It says she's got one at bat, scored a run and one strikeout. So she obviously struck out, ball got by the catcher, and then she ended up scoring. Right, so maybe she's got some wheels too. I know in practice sometimes she wants to play shortstop, so right. she just likes to do it all. It's a good eye there. Lily Backus, who we talked about having done such a great job in relief last night, back up in the Georgia bullpen. Yeah, the way this series is going, it's smart to have someone ready at all times. As that wind continues to blow straight out. That off-speed pitch just tied her up. Just an absolutely sells that pitch. With one out the Cats, your second baseman, number 22, Cassie Reisner. She keeps her arm speed fast, the way it comes oh. out of her hand, and. Oh, freezes her up beautifully. Lakatana knew it. And here's Cassie Reasoner now, who comes in to the Margaret Tobias spot at second base. Another freshman for the Wildcats. Reasoner's got three extra base hits in 23 at bats. And she tries to bunt, they throw through, they get the out at second. Lorsing scores the run. Boy, I'm telling you, that is that is tough to run on Lindy Ray Davis. Yes, it is. She has such a gun behind the plate. Her release is so fast. I believe last night she threw from her knees and right there she stood up and, I mean, no matter what, her arm is so strong. 
So Georgia gives up the run, and that ball hit deep to left. Does it stay fair? No, it's foul off the fence. Mersinger got a great piece on that, just gets around it just a little bit. So it doesn't stay fair. And so Kerpik's ahead in the count. One and two, the spot where she has relied on that off speed. And she gets the strikeout, and the <laughs> inning ends. Their offense than it was yesterday. How about that graphic? 18 and 0 when leading after two innings. As uh, Alexia Lakatena throws ball one. So you can close the book on Sydney Langdon. She goes an inning and a third, gives up a hit, three runs, all earned, walk two, struck out two, two wild pitches. The other two runs charged to Lakatena. Ball is lifted to right and hit pretty well. Ebbs goes back and gets it on the track for out number one. But listen, G Georgia doesn't need any help the way they hit the ball, but the way this wind is blowing today is anything that gets to the outfield's got a shot. Yeah, that ball actually carried a lot further than what I thought it was going to on an off-speed pitch. She kind of lost her legs and reached out and poked it, but it was almost at the wall there. Great job by Ebbs tracking that down. Wind was blowing out at 11 miles an hour to start the game as Chambly stands in and takes a called strike. It's great off speed by Alaka. They say it's still 11 miles an hour. Although those flags are just about straight out. That ball through the right side and that's a base hit. Third hit of the day for the Bulldogs and the first hit that has not been a homer. Chambly just stays hot. Last night she was seeing the ball so well. Same for today. She gets around this a little bit, but finds that 3-4 hole. She hits it hard enough, gets it right through the infield. So Reese her over at second doesn't have a chance. Ball stays upstairs. Be interesting now to see if Tony Baldwin gets a little aggressive on the base pass with a four-run lead. Why not? Why not? They don't have anything to lose right now. They have a four-run lead. See what the Wildcat defense can do. That ball's ripped to center. And Nesby is back on the track and gets it. Man, unfortunately for Sarah Mosley, she really squared that up. She hits the ball so hard. Credit to Nesby out there tracking it down just perfectly. That's two she squared up. Remember, she got the home run in the second. That's right. I mean, she is seeing it. Sometimes that happens as a hitter. You just you hit it hard, but you hit it right at someone, or maybe you get jammed off the hands and you get a hit. And here's Jaden Goodwin who walked and scored with two outs. That ball's off the fist, and that's going to drop. Just like that, jammed up the hands, and you get a hit. You know, I mean, she didn't hit that ball just as hard as Sarah Mosley. No, was, that was a jam, but there it is. It's not how. Right inside, but she's just so strong and stays behind it. Gets just enough. She finds a little hole. Second baseman number six. So the inning continues for Sydney Kuma. Chambly at second, Goodwin at first. Kuma's seen the ball so well this year. I'm curious to see if she can keep this rally going for Georgia and see if they can get that run back. Yeah. 
stayed downstairs. I think that had a, enough of the corner for Phil Friel's liking, but just wanted it up a bit. Maybe just a little bit low, which is good with this wind blowing out. Probably a good plan for both pitchers. That ball's hit to right, and that's hit pretty well, but back on the track and caught by Ebbs, and the inning is over. No, Their RPI is still high enough where they're playing, you know, beyond the SEC tournament for a chance to host down there, and Kentucky trying to get themselves in the postseason. Is that fair? That's pretty fair. Georgia and Kentucky both have played very tough teams this year, of course, in conference, but even out of conference. But Georgia has just won a lot of those games, a lot more than Kentucky has. So they probably have a very good chance of hosting regionals and supers. Riley Smith started things off for the Wildcats with a base hit. And that one picked up by Digby. She did a nice job of keeping it in front of her and then applied the tag for out number one. That is sometimes the nice thing at first base. If you do bobble a ground ball, you can just kind of pick it up and tag her out. Way to stick with that. And here is Aaron Koffel, who walked first time up. It is no more unusual to say that Aaron Koffel homered than it is to say Aaron Koffel walked. So true. You know, this at bat, they may decide to pitch around her and just not take the risk of her being a spark plug for the Wildcats. Boy, they pitched to her last night. I mean, I had not gotten the words out of my mouth that, well, surely now that they'll pitch around her. And about that time, it landed over there somewhere in the Shadeland neighborhood, right behind the park. But it doesn't look like Kerpix is. Coming anywhere near. No, and that's probably smart. Even though they do have a four-run lead, you don't want to give Kentucky any more momentum right now. And she walks on four straight pitches. Here's Taylor Ebbs, who has certainly shown she can make this a two-run game with one swing of the bat. They check and they do call that a swinging strike. Coach Lawson not happy about that call. Feels like we should be further along in the game with it only being the third inning. Inning, both teams have plenty of opportunities offensively still. We've had more and more games like that this year. I think pitchers may be a little bit more inconsistent. You could look at it the other way and right. saying hitters are being more disciplined. Yeah, both could definitely work. A lot more balls thrown, a lot more walks, hit by pitches, wild pitches. And then, of course, when you have huge innings, people hitting home runs and getting rallies going, it can make a game about three hours long. This game, we had seven of the first eight hitters where the count went full. And once again, we've got a full count, and now Rachel Lawson is out of the dugout. Here now the 3-2 pitch. That's going to advance Koffel, but again, Digby gets another one. So with two outs, here's Lauren Borzileri. Now Borzileri has shown a lot of power too. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier last weekend against Texas A&M, she had three home runs. She was really squaring up the ball. This is someone who can also change the game for the Wildcats. Ball missed inside.
There's that inside part of the plate that she's been nailing all day. And that ball caught right at the shoe tops. Great play by Goodwin to end the inning. Nothing going for the Wildcats in the third. Baldwin, kind enough to join us. Coach, we could see last night just how frustrated you were with the runners left on base, but you took care of that early with a couple of bombs. Yeah, we got a good couple good pitches to hit and put a couple, couple good swings on them. Um, you know, long way to go. We still have left some people out there, like to keep trying to clean it up a little bit. But, you know, all in all, it's a great day for softball. We've got a great crowd, and it's a, it's a great SEC weekend. Yes, sir. That's right, Coach. Madison Kerpix has been so efficient today. What makes her approach and execution different from what your staff did yesterday? Well, she's changing speeds, and, uh, you know, she's got good spin. So her spin can get her through some of the location stuff. So she doesn't have to be perfect with her location. The spin uh, seems to keep people off balance a little bit. But she's getting the ball for the most part where she needs to, and uh, we'll look to keep going with her. Absolutely. Great analysis, Coach. Thanks so much for the time. Thank you. Boy, that he's right. That spin, mm -hmm. that 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 has done it for today. I, although she's been right there on the black, and there you see the difference uh, yesterday to today. That's right. They're still leaving some runners right? on, but they are really still hitting the ball very hard and clearly up five runs here. Alexia Lacatena goes to work and throws a first pitch ball to Emily Digby. At this point, if she finishes this game, it's going to feel like a complete game because she came in relief so early. All right. After just an inning and a third to relieve Sydney Langdon. Boy, she really wanted that one. It did look a little bit inside, that off speed. And now Carissa Hamilton going out. Remember that uh, for those of you who have not joined us, Rachel Lawson has given up the pitch calling duties this year, except for Stephanie Schoonover, who she's worked with so much. So former pitcher Grace Ballman is calling the pitches here for everyone else on staff. I'm sure that's still an adjustment period for Coach Lawson after doing that for so many years. Sure. There you see Grace Ballman with Rachel Lawson just to her right. And whatever Hamilton said, it worked. Katana doing a great job attacking, looking like she's hitting her spots now, settling in, throwing her game. Boy, she really wanted that one. <laughs> we know he loves that part of the plate, but Again, probably just not enough. Kerpix is moving, cutting the corner, kind of moving inside the box. Lakatana is starting in the box and not quite coming over the plate enough. But came back and got her. That's what she was looking for. She's been working curve and off speed. Got her right here on a beautiful rise ball. Nice late break on the outside corner going up and away. Good hold by Carissa. First strikeout for Lakatena since her entry into the game. And Georgia set to turn over the lineup as the nine hitter Ailey Armstead stands in. Coach Tony Baldwin said she's doing a great job separating her offense and defense, saying that, you know, she can be two players. She can be. Ellie the hitter, Ellie the shortstop. You know, she doesn't have to let whatever's going on in the box affect her defense. That's right. She's been outstanding on defense and vice versa. So she's been doing a great job mental game-wise separating her offense and defense play. That 
ball. It's a fair ball, and they call her safe at first base. That was a bang-bang play. That'll be a base hit. It looks like even if Reasoner held on to the ball here, she probably was going to be safe. She squares around really late. So none of the corners are going to be there, so it's up to Carissa. And as you mentioned, Reasoner did not hold on to the ball, so that... Yeah, and even if she did, I believe she I probably she beat, beat that it out. out. Yeah. And so let's go short game again. Lakatena falls down, but still gets the out at first. What an athletic play. Way to stick with that for Alexia Lakatena. But she got the job done, moved the runner. Hats off to Dallas. Good night. Now they're in scoring position again. But they get the out, and there are now two outs. And the catcher, Lindy Ray Davis, getting her gear off and stepping in. She's looking for her first hit today. And now time is being called. Attack it when you see it. I'm sure Lindy Ray is getting her mind right for that. Ball misses outside. If Davis can do something, the dangerous Jada Kearney waits on deck. Pretty off-speed pitch. It's a great pitch, and it's also a great take. If she's not sitting on an off-speed pitch, that's smart just to take it. If she's sitting a different speed, more of one of her curve or rise balls. There, she got that outside corner. And she's adding the count one and two. Got her swinging. So Lakatena gets out of the jam. Rachel, you look at his 5-1 score. It was just really two swings of the Georgia bats at the right time. Yeah, you know, that's what happens. They're such a good hitting team. And when you have people on base, the score starts to get kind of big. So we just got to make sure that we're doing the same thing. We're putting our runners on base and hopefully getting a big hit when it counts. Hey, Coach, Lakatana has settled in really nicely. Are there any adjustments that she's going to have to make to keep you guys in the game and maybe prevent you from making another pitching change? Yeah, we got to get a little bit better in the zone. Um, the umpire's not really calling the low pitch, so we got to make sure that we get strikes and we aren't behind so that we lift it up with the, in a hitter's count. So she needs to do that, hopefully keep the bases clean, and then maybe we'll be able to get back into this thing. Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate the time. All right, thank you. Okay. So, yeah, so that's – that's I, I agree with what she's saying, you know, and – well, you speak to it as a pitcher. I mean, you can you can think a pitch is a strike, but ultimately right. it's what that person thinks, right? That's right. That's why it's so important to establish the zone early in the game, even if you're not the starting pitcher, but just taking note of what is he calling? What? Where do I need it? Talk to your catcher. See, a lot of the time your catcher turns around and they'll talk to the umpire, ask where they want it. Do they want it higher or lower? Do they, like, enter out more? What do I need to get that pitch called? So Peyton Plotz re-enters, and she takes ball one. Beautiful off-speed, just a little bit low there. But even, you know, as a pitcher, you don't want every pitch to be a strike even though that was a yeah, little low. And <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, that would be great. But it does throw the timing off a little bit, even as a ball there. Boy, now it's a 3-0 and count. And that's ball four. So Kerpix 
He's gone through this a little bit at times during this game. But again, this wind continues to blow straight out, and you just pop a ball up into the outfield, and it's got a chance. Shoot, that's what I would try to do. And Lorsung lines that one foul down the third baseline. She's really getting around the ball, but hitting it hard, and it worked for her last time. Got right down the line. Got that double right in that same spot. And she certainly has the ability to lift that ball into that wind. She really does. This year with 11 home runs, last year in total she had nine. So her, her power numbers have improved this year. See, she's been getting extra base hit, base hit. She already has 22. That ball is hit deep, back to the track and gone. Just what we were talking about. Wow, you called it too. Number 12 for Larson. Plot scores in front of her. And all of a sudden, it's a two-run game. Just like you said, just hit the ball, pop it up, see if it's deep enough, and let the wind kind of do the rest. But really, she got a lot of this ball. This was no thank you to the wind. She was perfectly on time on the inside corner. How they've kind of been throwing her all weekend, and you can tell she was expecting it. And now Lily Backus quickly gets back up in the Georgia bullpen. Yeah, and both of these teams really do pitch by committee, typically seeing at least two pitchers per game. Hamilton goes after the first pitch, and Armistead across the diamond for out number one. See Kerpix right there answering back, getting a weak ground ball. That is a sign of a tough pitcher after a mm -hmm. home run, especially a multiple scoring home run. I mean, that's what, that's a great point, Lauren. That's what led to the end of Langdon's day. She gave up the solo homer and then two walks and a half. And a few batters later, it's a grand slam off the bat of good night. Yeah, and that could be a difference between, you know, a freshman and an upperclassman. Kerpik's just showing mental toughness and confidence in her pitches. Lakatena with a good cut there. But Kerpik's ahead in the count 0-2. And that's the way you bounce back after something like that. Get ahead in the count, see if you can get some people to miss hit. That ball off her foot and called foul. Kerpix just does a great job of painting that inside corner. We've been saying it all day, but I guess Kentucky really just is recognizing that is going to be called strike three if you don't swing. So Lakatana smart there to foul that off and stay alive. And she got her swinging. Fourth strikeout of the day for Kerpix. She's mixing her pitches very well. You can see her, obviously, she's throwing a lot of off speed, but hitting both sides of the plate, a lot of inside to righties, and her rise ball is breaking very well. Four strikeouts and five walks. And now the slapper, Margaret Tobias, re enters. Tobias has kind of been in and out of the lineup lately. But, I mean, she still has a great average on the year, hitting over 300. It has not been her offense that has caused her to go in and out of that lineup, but inconsistency out there at second base. That'll do it. You do need a strong defense, and a lot of the time, if, if you're someone who's executing plays on defense, you're going to be put in the order. Uh, 
fouls that one off. I'm sure you guys have touched on this quite a bit, but pretty cool that Margaret was high school teammates with Caitlin Clark, basketball star. Isn't that, though? It's pretty neat. I bet you passed the ball to her an awful lot. <laughs> I can imagine. That one just missed. See Kerpix out there trying to keep her fingers warm. Even though it's sunny, it's still just a little bit chilly. Says the lady wearing short sleeves. <laughs> hey, I'm in the press box. <laughs> Feels good in here. <laughs> but with her being a spinny pitcher, she, right? she needs those fingers warm so she can make the ball do what she wants to do. The one thing we can't feel up here is that wind. We've got the window open. But until you get down on the field. Kind of a wind tunnel down there sometimes. And that tunnel is blowing straight out toward Tate's Creek Road here behind John Crop Stadium in Lexington. Little battle here from Margaret. See if Kerpix goes back to this off speed pitch, gets her to chase. First one of these we've had today. This is the ninth pitch of the at bat. And got her swinging. Got her on the off speed. Which, believe it or not, is three weeks from today. Already. Wow. That will take place. On May 4th, and then just three days later, the SEC tournament opens on May 7th. That's right. What a big week. And here to start the Georgia 5th is Jada Kearney. Who fouls that one off. Not surprised to see her taking a big hack at that first pitch. She's just, she's hit so well this year. Averages high, 14 home runs. We haven't really seen that yet from her this week, and I'm sure she's very hungry to produce here. Round to the second, and there Tobias makes that play cleanly for out number one. You know what they say, you enter the game, the ball's gonna find, find you. you. Delaney Sullivan has checked into the Kentucky lineup out there in center field now. As Rachel Lawson continues to use the lineup. And now with the Cats back within two runs as Sydney Chambly stands in. How about another one? And it found her again. Sure did. Two clean plays from Tobias as she enters the game. What I was starting to say was I saw, go ahead and we'll take a look at this. Not an easy play, but Tobias made it look easy. Yeah, she sure did. It was right there in the hole. She had to go quite a bit to her left there. Yeah. Keeps the ball in front of her eyes and then a smooth backhand as she's running away. And here's Sarah Mosley who went deep early. What I was starting to say was, I, now that the Cats are back within a couple of runs, I spied your buddy Stephanie Schoonover out there doing the aforementioned jumping jacks in the Kentucky bullpen as she gets ready now. It's kind of her signature move now. Did you have a signature move when you were getting loosened up? My signature move was cheer on my team and <laughs> I don't think I really did any jumping jacks or anything like that. I think in travel ball I might have done some sprints. Okay. And there's a base hit back up the middle as Mosley continues to have a big weekend. Oh yeah, she's seen the ball great, squaring it up, whether it's at someone, over the fence, right back up the middle. She's been very reliable today. Left fielder number two, Jaden Goodwin. And here's Jaden Goodwin. Kentucky native here. Used to come to UK camps quite a bit. I remember when she was much younger. Just this past week, I believe Georgia played Georgia State. That's where her sister JC's at. Oh, that's right. 
They did play midweek. I think Georgia won 5 nothing on Wednesday. Right. It's got to be cool to play your sister. And they just had National Siblings Day, too. I think the NCAA softball account was just posting about that and two active players right now. That one on the inside part of the plate. Pretty off-speed pitch from Lakatena. I love how she's going inside to these lefty hitters and really working both sides of the plate. And that ball shot to Lorsing. They get the base hit from Mosley, but take over for Madison Kerpix. Yeah, Lily Back has had a very impressive outing last night. I think the first batter she faced, she did give up a home run. But after that, she really did shut out the, the Wildcat offense, other than Aaron Koffel's home run, too. I guess I did forget about that one. But overall, she did do very well. I believe what the Wildcats had the most trouble with last night was her elite changeup. Mm -hmm. She just she sells it so well. It looks just like her fastball coming in there, her faster pitches, and uh, we definitely did not see the Wildcats catch up to that. As you saw there, she was in for four and a third, and that ball got by her, but how about the play by Armistead? They call that one safe. I believe Georgia might ask for another look-see on that one, maybe. Yeah, I would review that one. That one was very close. As I said, she pitched four and a third last night, gave up five hits and one earned run, and here comes Tony Baldwin out of the Georgia dugout. I'm not as good as I once was, but just with the naked eye, I think it was a good challenge by Georgia. I think it was too, and that's their last challenge of the day. You know, they didn't win either of them, but sometimes it is worth a shot, and I think Kerpix did get her glove a little bit on that ball, so it slowed down the it ball did. a little bit. And you know why it was a good thing to review it, because it's worth it with this young lady at the dish. There's no doubt about that. Now we have a runner on first here for Kentucky, and you know, Armistead at shortstop, she did the best she could with that, but now a different game plan. So, wow, here comes Rachel Lawson really quickly, and I don't know what she's coming out so quickly about. I don't know if she feels like that Davis's glove is in the hitting zone or what, but, but I mean, this is interesting now. If you put Koffel on, you bring the go-ahead run to the plate. But out of anybody in this park, I think she's got to be suspect number one to have a chance to tie it up. Boy, she ripped that one in right at the left fielder. Goodwin for out number one. Yep, good piece there, and they did decide to pitch to her. With one out for the Cats. I believe, too, they might have switched catchers. It might be Sarah Gordon behind the plate now, it looks like, for Georgia. That is a good call. Now, check that. I can't see the number, but according to the stat broadcast, it looks like Marissa Miller, number 56. There we go. Maybe just bring in a new pitcher. Get these two working together. Bring in catcher two. Yeah, I, I, I guess, but unless something happened that we didn't see because Davis caught for Bacchus last night. And certainly the way she swings the bat. And she's been really outstanding behind the plate. She really has. And that ball misses downstairs. Ebbs another in this Kentucky lineup. Of course, she had the four RBIs last night on the double and the home run. Curveball just getting away from her just a little bit. That release is just a little bit too late. It's gonna make that ball tail just a bit outside. First inning that Bacchus came in last night, it didn't look like she'd be around for a second, but she settled down. 
And the one thing she did last night was when she needed a strike, that off-speed pitch is what she went to consistently. Right there. I love that she can throw it for a strike. She can throw it on any count. Ball grounded foul at first. See right there, she threw it just a little bit lower with two strikes. Ebbs went after that and chased it. And love how she can make this pitch a strike if the hitter doesn't swing or make a hitter chase. Got the called strike three right there. And then you come back with a pitch like that. And that's a big one. It's a big speed increase here. Great movement right here. She made the adjustment from the last curveball she threw. She released that just a little bit earlier, so it's not going to tail as far outside. It just freezes her up. Yep. And so with two outs, Lauren Borzaleri takes ball one. You have to think, too, for the Wildcat hitters, after facing her last night, maybe some of these hitters, if they're good at off speed, might choose to sit on her changeup. They are certainly having some difficulty, at least here in her first inning of work, of recognizing early what she's coming with. They are, and she she does throw just a little bit, slightly slower than the other pitchers on staff, but she does have elite movement, and she's a lefty, so it's a completely different look. And I believe she does have the best changeup on staff, too. Always good to have a pitching staff that's versatile, bring different looks, different speeds, different strengths. Slow roller. Backus has got it. And she's out of the inning, comes in and does her job. And keeps the Wildcats off the board. It's, it's over 20,000 square feet. Locker room, training room, team meeting room, nutrition space and lounge, even a weight room. So basically everything these student athletes need, that's right there. Everything's there for you. And the one thing that we can't get more of is time. And so the more efficient you are with your time, the more it's going to lift every aspect of your program. That's absolutely right. I mean, that's going to be a huge selling piece, too, for their recruiting process. Just having all of that right there, that is so convenient for a student athlete with how busy they are. Sydney Kuma takes that for a called strike. And now Lakatena ahead in the count one and two. Great cut there by Kuma, protecting. Just gonna foul off until she can get one that she can get a hold of. Got some serious power and speed. Looks like Lakatana wanted to shake off that pitch. Probably has something else in mind how she wants to attack Kuma. Got her on the inside part of the plate. Looks like she was right. That was a really nice backdoor curveball. Third strikeout for Lakatena. She knew what she wanted to throw, and she knows that's what he's been calling all day. Just curves right back in over the plate, but kind of starts a little bit in the box. Gets Kuma looking. And here's Emily Digby. That ball is hit well to left center. Is it enough? It is. Third home run of the day for the Dogs, who already lead the SEC. That one is a solo shot. And the lead is extended to 6-3. to Digby just stays hot. Even last weekend against Tennessee, she was squaring up the ball off of Carlin Pickens, and this one right over the heart of the plate. She lets it get deep enough, stays in her legs, full extension through, right over the fence. But to go back to what Langdon went through in an inning in a third, 
it stings, but not as much if you don't have runners on. That's right. That's why it's so important to get the leadoff hitter on for both offenses. So hitters coming up behind them can do something, and you guys can score runs. Lockatenna comes right back to even account. The there you see those Georgia numbers now up to 65 as they continue to lead the SEC. All six Georgia RBIs today have come on home runs. A grand slam and two solo shots. Georgia's doing a great job answering back compared to how they were hitting last night. Seems like one through nine, everyone's putting together really nice at bats, being selective, squaring up when it's there. That'll find the seats down the third baseline. Lakatana getting a ball she likes. It's so important as a pitcher. You want to feel comfortable with the ball you're about to throw. Armistead single last time up. And Lockatana gets the sign and wants to get another sign to make sure. Now it's the second pitch. She's shaken off this inning. And they're still kind of going back and forth. Saw this is the fifth 3 2 count that Georgia's had today. Kentucky has certainly had their fair share as well. Let's see if Lakatana can get a pitch that she's on the same page with this time. Looks like not. Nope, she's going to shake it off. Make sure she throws what she thinks that she can get Armistead out with. So is she calling her own pitches? It seems like that when she's shaking off. Yeah. Well, she called the right one. You gotta love that as a pitcher, though. I mean, she she has a game plan. I think she knows what is what's working for her, what's feeling good, and she has a feel for the hitters that she's facing. But it looks like yeah, when she she shakes off a pitch, she looks at her armband and decides and relays that to Hamilton behind the plate. And here's Dallas Goodnight, who went deep. And I'm looking. She's looking into the dugout. And are they? I don't think they're using the wristband, are they? I'm just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. I think that her and Grace Ballman just maybe aren't on the same page on every pitch that Grace calls. And if Lakatana decides to shake it off, Lakatana just ends up picking one herself. Oh, I see what's going on now. So Grace is actually calling the pitches. And that looks like Molly Johnson Belcher next to her, who's signaling in the pit the the uh, the call. Right. It looks like a whole team effort here. Yeah, it does. It's kind of like football coaches trying to call a play on the sideline. Popped it up to the infield. Oh my gosh. And Lorsing dropped it. Yeah, kind of an awkward angle there. Sun was in her eyes. 
lot of spin on that ball. It wasn't hit very high, so you could tell it was really spinny, kind of off the hands, and looks like she maybe just lost it in the sun and couldn't pull it in. Still one she feels like she shouldn't have lost. She had both hands there, but that ball kept blowing in the wind. Sun hadn't started setting yet, but that sun right now always sits right behind the first base dugout here at John Crop Stadium. And so here is Marissa Miller, who came on for Lindy Ray Davis. So Davis has not re-entered here to hit, as I thought she might. And that ball's fouled off as Goodnight was on her way, trying to get her into scoring position. And Rachel Lawson. So does she tell the umpire because she's checking on the health of Lockettena? The runner left on time at first base. Kentucky is challenging that ah. ruling. The ruling is under further review. Well, there you go. Yep, using her challenge That's here. What Marty Abazetian is telling us. And because we were looking at the night. Askins free, and she just used her first one. They still have one more, and Georgia's already used both of their challenges. With a beautiful young daughter who's here at the park today, you'll find out that Askins free. <laughs> And she'll, de <laughs> she'll determine that really quickly. We've got a little more time, not talking quite yet. <laughs> we can hold off on that for a little oh, bit. Oh, boy. Slow just, down. Just get ready. <laughs> just get ready. <laughs> Preparing me. You do have daughters of your own, don't you? I do. The ball is popped up. And that time it's taken... They'll be facing Lily Backus. Backus already doing an outstanding job mixing in her amazing changeup. Going after these hitters, her job is to induce some pop-ups, some ground outs, maybe get a strike out here and there, close out the game. Boy, that's another pretty off-speed pitch. See, this is just what she did, you know, first inning was a little choppy and then she came right back out for that second inning of work, and after that, she pitched really well. Saved the bomb she gave up to Coffin. I know this last week, her and Chelsea Wilkinson, the pitching coach for Georgia, made some kind of mechanical adjustment. So, they did? Yeah, so you just wonder how that might be helping her out or affecting her play today and yesterday. Well, to this point in time, I got to believe that Wilkinson and Tony Baldwin are very pleased with what she's done the first two games of this series. Yeah, you would think so. She's she's throwing her game very well, being efficient, staying tough after home runs and doing what they need. And misses outside. Plotz has got the ability to get that ball up in the wind. She's done it six times in this her freshman season. Yeah, Plotz is so explosive to the ball. I think she also has a really great eye. And she's just strong. She's strong for a freshman, but just strong in general for an SEC athlete, and that's why she's worked her way into the lineup. I think her setup at the plate is so good, and, and her body is just so still before she engages everything. I have to agree with that, and that allows her to really see the pitch all the way in. She doesn't have too much movement going on. Can choose the right pitch to take hack at. That off-speed pitch, wow. You can see that coming. I Kentucky crowd didn't like that, but boy, that looked good to me up here. Wow. Yeah, the crowd certainly letting the umpire know they absolutely disagree. I think they thought that might have been a little bit too high coming in. It was certainly right over the middle of the plate. Perfect off-speed pitch. I guess the crowd might have thought that was too high, but I mean. Either that or they thought it broke late and wrapped around the plate, right? But I. Right. Right there it is again. And these hitters for Kentucky, you have to be expecting at least two change-ups per at-bat. At least. This is, this is her go-to pitch. 
Forcing Homer last time up. She's working on a two for two day. Here you see the double, two RBIs and two runs scored. And a tip of the hat to uh, to our folks uh, who work on our crew here on the SEC Network Plus. Big weekend for them. They were doing football earlier over at the stadium and doing softball all this weekend. And really do a great job for us as that ball comes back toward the screen. And Miller had a play but couldn't get to it. Off your team's down. Boy, and she went off speed again and got her with that 2-2. That is the definition right there, Miss Lingle, of pulling the string. It sure is. She does a fantastic job selling this pitch and getting it to fall off the table, breaking much earlier when she's ahead in the count with two strikes. It's, it's like she almost throws it off her palm without a lot of finger pressure. Is, am, am, am I seeing that right? Or? It's hard to say. Boy, pop that one up again, and boy, she is done for this inning. Best we've seen of Lily Backus today. We head to the seventh. Pitcher into the lineup today, and she delivers ball one to Jaden Kearney. Yeah, Georgia has not seen Jaden Vickers yet, the Rutgers transfer. She's the Kentucky lefty on the staff. She's very experienced. She's going to come in with some curve and rise. Last year, she had some pretty big wins. At Rutgers, she actually beat Northwestern, Iowa, and Texas Tech. And this year earlier, she beat Stanford when they were ranked number three. Right. And they're cruising right now, Stanford. So Sydney Langdon started when an inning and a third, gave up one hit but three runs. They were all earned, two walks, two strikeouts, two wild pitches. Lakatena came in and goes four and two thirds, gives up six hits, three runs. They were all earned. One walk and three strikeouts. Vickers going up against three, four, and five in this big hitting Georgia lineup and trying to keep the margin at three for the Wildcats. Right, welcome to the game. Here's our best hitter, Jada Kearney. Right. <laughs> time to ease into it. Yeah, Vickers gonna be working mid to high 60s. A lot of up in the zone, a lot of spin on her curveball, throws it well into righties, which this umpire is calling today if she can hit that spot. I know Coach Lawson was very excited about adding her to the pitching staff this year. Different look from Stephanie Schoonover in the circle. Lo and behold here, we got another full count. The trend for today. <laughs> well, you can tell Jada Kearney is thirsty for a hit. We just haven't seen so much from her this week and what she's capable of. And I'm sure a lot of that is these pitchers know she's their best hitter. So they're going to give her their best and pitch around her a little bit and try to stay away from her. And I think she's she's swinging. She's battling until she can get one, get a hold of one. I can't imagine she's gone too many weekends where she's gone over in the first two games of the series. Right. She draws that leadoff walk here in the seventh. Well, or try to sacrifice her over. They're in at the corners, and that's what they expected. Borzaleri goes over to first, and Tobias there to cover. Oh, she did her job. Gets Eaton into scoring position with just one out. For the hot hitting Sarah Mosley here. All she's done is homered and singled. I think the one out, too, she squared up really well oh, she to the did. outfield. Straight away center, that's right. And she is looking for anything around the plate right now. 
Yeah, you can tell a lot of these Georgia hitters are just, they're going up. If it's close, they're taking a hack. They see those flags blowing in the outfield. They're going to take their chances here. See, she's a huge RBI producer for Georgia. Hit that one well to right. Ebbs goes back and gets it. Eaton can't advance. And they're two away. Yeah, it looks like if Eaton possibly didn't run halfway and maybe tagged up, maybe she could have gone to third. That was a pretty deep ball, but decided to go halfway just in case. And Ebbs was going back on it. Still has that brace on the right shoulder from where she jammed it, diving back into a base a few weeks ago. But with two down, here's Jaden Goodwin. She's been a consistent hitter for Georgia this year as well, sophomore. Popped her up into right field. Ebbs has it. And the inning is over. One more chance for the Wildcats. They need three. For the first time today. Rachel Lawson starts things off here in the home half of the seventh with a pinch hitter. And it'll be the freshman, Allie Hutchins. She's someone who started a lot of games for the Wildcats this year. And as of late, she's been used more in the pinch hitting role. She does have power and can hit for a little bit of average. Hutchins, Tobias in the top of the order for the Wildcats. She's actually someone that Coach Lawson compared to Erin Koffel when Erin Koffel was a freshman. She's someone who has a lot of tools hitting, someone that can really grow into a great hitter for this offense. What a play there at second. How about that by Kuma? I thought that had a chance to get through for a leadoff single, but Kuma said, no, no. Kuma tracked that down perfectly. She took, she took a great angle to get that ball back almost behind first base. Got rid of it quick. She goes right glove side there. Quick turn, quick release, and then nice dig there out at first by Digby. And with one out, here's the slapper, Tobias. Well, you can tell Bacchus is really feeling it now. She's just hit her stride. Yep. That will be huge for Georgia down the stretch if they get her back in a groove. That's right, and I know that three of their main starters, they really haven't had a time all year where all three are performing well. It's usually just one or two at a time. Boy, there's a little poke out the left field, and a great play out there by Goodwin, but she couldn't get it. And so that's a base hit. Great effort out there in the outfield, but credit to Margaret Tobias for getting a good piece of that. And this is what Tobias does. Margaret's just very short to contact here. Gets a perfect poke based on how the defense is playing her. And a great try by Goodwin out there, but just can't come up with it. Leadoff hitter Riley Smith in the biggest at bat of the day. Because if Smith gets on, Aaron Koffel is on deck. Then you decide, do we pitch to her? Do we walk her? Do we load the bases if we walk her? You've got a decision either way because if Smith can't get on base and you walk Koffel, that still brings the potential tying run to the plate. And big hitting Taylor Epps. That's right. Boy, she just paints that corner so beautifully inside the lefties. Backus ahead in the count, one and two. Ball 
was foul at first. Certainly look to her to mix some speeds here. It's what's been working for her all day. Why go away from that? To second, the flip to first, and she dropped it. Wow. That was a great flip by Kuma. Kuma did play that actually perfectly. Just here with the speed of Kentucky, once that ball is put on the ground, Riley doing a great job making something happen, but with the speed of Margaret Tobias on first, after this nice flip here, it just looks like she didn't secure the ball first. She's thinking, oh, I got to be quick. I got to get both outs. And so what do they do with Koffel? Tobias at second, Smith at first. Koffel didn't see anything until late yesterday. Looks like they might try to see if Koffel chases and reaches out and miss hits something. Maybe not go at her directly. Boy, and there's a shot to center field. That's a base hit. They're going to wave around Tobias. Smith comes into third. Koffel at first with the RBI single. And the Georgia lead is cut to six to four. There's that situational hitting, runners in scoring position that we were just talking about. Aaron lets that ball deep, gets inside and behind it, and drives it right behind the runner. And so here's Taylor Epps. And remember, all she did yesterday was come through with four RBIs, including a three-run homer. And she represents the winning run at the plate. And time is coming. It's got to be encouraging if you're Georgia, knowing that. Here's a look at that home run last night. Squares that up perfectly. Now she looks at the 1-1 pitch. Good take right there on the off speed. The energy's rising right now in the stadium, so sometimes it's hard to take. Good eye right there by Ebbs. That one stayed just outside, and Bacchus wanted it. I don't blame her. He has been calling that part of the plate. Maybe that was just a little bit too outside right there, but if I'm her, I'd want that pitch too. Boy, and every time she needs a pitch, she comes back to that off speed. Man alive. Yeah, if I'm her, I'd come right back to that. That just works so well for her. And got her swinging on a 3-2 pitch. Again, it was the off speed. And there it was. That was so smart to go right back to that pitch. Credit to Chelsea Wilkinson, the pitch caller for Georgia. She just releases that pitch just a little bit earlier to get it break sooner. She does. She swings right over it. And so with two down, here's Lauren Borzaleri. There it is again. And here's the great debate. You know, you could go for a walk and set up a force at any base, but then you put the tying run in scoring position. And Borzileri is quickly behind 0-2. Yeah, behind 0-2, Georgia has two outs. I don't know about you, but if I'm in that batter's box, I'm looking for that off-speed pitch. That's absolutely what I would be doing right now. Wasted one. Now she comes back with the off speed. You would really think so. 
Let's see if Borzaleri is thinking the same thing. There it was. Wow. This is really big for the Bulldogs going forward.